Hello, fellow rabbit hole dwellers. As you can see, the results are in for the Argentinian uh, elections. Joel, there's um, some uh, dialogue going on over at Bitcoin Twitter or X at the moment and um, about the uh, results. What, what sort of stuff have you come across in terms of uh, what people are saying out there and the feedback you're getting? So it's, it's, it's been a bit weird. I've seen everything under the sun. Um, obviously, the pro Javier Millet people, um, actually, at the time of when we're recording this, there will be a live stream with, um, I think his name is Nick. He's the marketing head of Blockstream, an Argentinian guy. He'll go live with Jordan from the Bitcoin Collective, and he'll sort of explain apparently how instrumental this election has been, because Javier, with all of his antics and the way he is, um, he um, managed to essentially beat a very old rotten system from what I understand. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he basically beat the system that has brought them 150% inflation. So like on paper you go, it shouldn't be hard to beat, but then again, you know, politics are weird. And yeah, this has sort of, again, divided the Bitcoin community into a number of different things, you know, like uh, the pro status, the, oh, he's on the WEF website. Yeah, he is, but like with the shitty photo. And I sort of sit there in the middle and I go like, well, I actually look at the result from the Argentinian perspective. And if he's won with like, what, three and a half million more votes, first of all, that looks like a democratic vote take it whatever we want with it um we in the west it looks like you know it's been another corruption case that's what it feels like um and on the other side i just go like hey if the argentinian people think this super hardcore way is the way let's wait it out and see if it is i mean if he isn't he's not going to be elected anyway again so like you know again people take a chill pill that's sort of my first reaction how about you Ian? may I, I know what you mean there's there's a mixture of emotions going on over in uh, the social media side of things but I, I guess i'm still trying to uh figure out exactly where i sit in all this and um I, uh, i've got a lot of com conflicting thoughts and feelings about it all but ultimately uh, the only reason why we you and i are talking about it right now and why all the other Bitcoin is talking about it right now is because Bitcoin is kind of like not centered to his narrative, but he's obviously very anti-central bank and he's obviously pro very pro-Bitcoin and he's made that quite clear in in um, a lot of the interviews he's done on the Argentinian uh, mainstream media and all that sort of stuff. So we as Bitcoiners are looking at it critically, but also I think there's a lot of um, stuff going on where um, I feel a lot of Bitcoiners are being blind to some of the other sort of narratives that are going on alongside um, this whole thing, this whole campaign. And I was listening to some of the interviews being done by the um, local mainstream media um, over in Argentina about the, the, the results um, of the election and why people did actually vote for him. And there was quite a few people saying there, albeit I don't agree with a lot of the social things that he's been talking about, what he actually is making sense about and what we need to do is think uh, critically and radically about the economy. And like you said, there's 150% inflation there or something along those lines. And obviously that's quite a desperate situation that people are living in. And when it comes to us, um, if, if it ever came to us over here in the UK or in Europe and we hit 150,000, 150,000, 150% inflation, you know, we might be sort of um, asking ourselves the, the, the question, okay, this guy is offering something quite radical mm -hmm. in terms of flipping the economy. You know, I'm suffering, I'm working all these hours, I'm getting nothing for it. The system's broken. He's made that quite clear and I can see it is broken. And maybe this new option might be the way forward. But Obviously, they're, they're, they're in a position where they're going to vote for him on that basis, despite some of the questionable social stuff he, he talks about as well, particularly around things like, I don't know, abortion or uh, this and that and the other. Some people might be like, oh, that's not really sort of my cup of tea. And personally, I think people should have the choice to um, have the abortion, have abortions and all that sort of stuff. So... A lot of stuff I don't agree with socially, but economic wise, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm sort of like trying to look at it from that perspective. Yeah. So one other thing I'm, I'm thinking about as well is obviously Bitcoin's got a PR problem, right? We've got, um, mm -hmm. and what I'm, I suppose I'm concerned about is 
Bitcoin's reputation being tarnished based on a politician's social um, change in, in a region. And yeah, we've got El Salvador. And we can talk about that because you've just recently got back from El Salvador with adopting Bitcoin. But I suppose um, with people who don't quite understand that Bitcoin is for everyone, it's not actually attached to any kind of state per se, it's not owned by anyone, that it, if um, once he becomes more established and people become maybe more critical of him as a leader for Argentina, how they might conflate that with Bitcoin somehow. Does that make sense? Yes, totally. And I think adding on his social issues a bit, I actually got kicked out of Telegram group earlier today because I was just bringing up this um, issue. I visited South America quite a lot of times and to understand his stance there. And also like one guy was telling me he didn't really speak Spanish properly in that Telegram group. And he was like, oh, you know, he's been speaking so primitive. Like he, he says like, I don't know, Sofia de puta madre and all of these things. If you've ever been to South America, even women speak like this down there. I'm not throwing everyone in like one basket. Obviously, there's different countries, different, you know, um, so, sort of social etiquettes and stuff. But the way he spoke, you can actually pop down into a coffee shop in Buenos Aires. You'll hear a lot of similar uh, uh, narratives, I would say, a similar language. And you also saw this in his demographics. A lot of younger people voted for him. And obviously, someone younger is going to drop an F-bomb in Spanish or, or whatever, rather than compared to the maybe a bit more conservative, you know, classical um, uh, government they had so far, uh, which is pretty much heavily socialism leaning. Um, so from that end, these are sort of nuances, which I think we don't often understand. And just having been in El Salvador, I've actually been um, quite shocked there as well as a Westerner because um, abortion is also illegal in El Salvador, for example. But it sort of never came up as a social issue because, A, a lot of people are very religious over there. So like, you know, naturally abortion is sort of looked at as something bad either way. And from what I know from um, having visited Argentina and such as well, this is the same thing. So I think there is, again, this thing where we like go and we see like, oh, shit, they have something different than we do. And this is bad. So this is the thing where I go like, OK, I'll just ignore that stuff because we all know what politics is like. You also say stuff like I am pro or against abortion to get votes because you need votes to win. Right. So I think from my end, I'll also kind of ignore these things. Because we've just seen it time in and time out again. Um, and it's also super annoying these days. Um, but I agree on your end, the economic side is what he needs to fix. Um, and I've also heard quite a lot of criticism because he wants to get rid of the pesos, which again, 150% inflation and replaces with dollar for now. And I've sort of heard Twitter spaces today as well that argue that this is not a libertarian approach and he's an Austrian economics guy. But I think a lot of people need to understand in order to get to hyper Bitcoinization, you sort of need the most stable in quotation mark uh, uh, currency that exists currently. And this just is the US dollar. I mean, we have the pound over here, it's a shit coin as well. And that compared to the US dollar has, again, its momentum on the downside and is not that stable for, let's just say, a, an economy or a um, society to function properly and if this is like the way for him to first of all save the economy in one way um also make government super lean i mean there's this video clip where he like rips off the um the different departments and these kind of things um and again sort of have that focus on fixing the money first essentially and then maybe bringing bitcoin into it we'll see but i just think we'll we need to give it a few days now for like everything to cool down and actually see what his actions are because i also then started you know looking into like okay he's gained the vote now but like does he actually have the majority in you know the cabinet and all these things um or in the chamber sorry and he has to like in three weeks set up now a whole government apparently because that's the way it works in argentina so you know, it's not like he comes in and now he changes everything. This will just take time. But I think it will be interesting to see if he can dollarize, which is a lot of Bitcoiners say it's bad, but people, let's be honest, Bitcoin always pumped when money supply pumped. So, you know, if there's another country coming onto the dollar standard and it already has the basis for a lot of people to actually be used to digital assets, whether that's a stable coin or Bitcoin, um, I think this is a positive impact. I could be wrong. If I am, we'll do an update to this. 
But I think sort of these combinations are somehow creeping in and a lot of people are excited that someone beat the system. I think that's the number one thing. But we still have to be a bit careful, you know, in, in who we are um, cheering for, slay your heroes, whatever you want to think about, and sort of come up with a way where um, it just makes more sense for the people down there. If, 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 it's quite hard to explain, actually, at the end of the day. But I think number one thing for Argentinians is they got rid of the people who brought them high inflation, and now they voted for him to see if his plan works out. But, you know, having said that, like, how do you get rid of a central bank? I actually Googled this today and there's no answer. So like, it will be interesting how he does this. Yeah, for sure. And and you know what? It's it's all right for us um, to, you know, be all this, um, all these layers removed away from the actual situation on the ground in Argentina, right? Because it's all right for us to be critical of, of this and that and the other, but actually we don't live in that environment. We don't actually know what, what the... Um, appetite is for a lot of the policies that he's actually um, mm -hmm. arguing for and 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 this pro um um you know this and that and the other and and how that you know we we should be very um observant of what is going to happen how it's going to play out and th this whole question of whether he's going to go with the us dollar or whatever it is yes that's probably the nearest store of value that is going to be as stable mm -hmm. as 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 anything at, at the moment but then again you know this is what i suppose i do worry about is if he does dollarize how infectious that dollar can be how mm -hmm. might it influence the overall aim or goal towards bitcoin and whether or not he has to do some dodgy dealings behind closed doors with mm. certain agencies whereby he has to um let go of some of his uh, desires moving forward and how Dude, that might play out long term the same thing happened in El Salvador. Everyone is praising Bukele for, you know, having basically shown the middle finger to the um, IMF and such. He made a deal with the uh, big central bank of China at the end of the day. So, you know, he sort of fled from the Western end to the Asian end. Not to say that, like, he did anything wrong with the, in terms of legal tender, but having been on El Salvador ground as well, yes, it is a, a grassroots movement. So more and more people um, have picked up what Bitcoin is. But still a small uh, circle, but I think it's growing naturally, which is good. So it's not a top-down approach, it's a bottom-up one. Um, contrary to what I've seen from a lot of um, Bitcoin influencers who, who like to use these opportunities for clicks and, and engagement, um, people have gotten rid of stuff like the Chiva wallet, at least from what I've engaged in. I've not just been in San Salvador and El Sonte. I've traveled to Santa Ana. I've traveled to all of these smaller towns between the big cities and just sort of checked out BTC map. And if someone accepts me quite, I went there. Um, yeah, and, and the people told me, because I, I am fluent in Spanish, that they also, uh, you know, want to get rid of that government wallet because they had issues with KYC and these things. So they're adopting and, path in adopting is probably using a, a, a custodial service other than Chiva Wallet first, then understanding how self-custody works and, you know, sort of step by step or paso a paso, how, you, how they said it in El Salvador, um, get to the sovereign Bitcoin way, the self-sovereign Bitcoin way. Um, but yeah, it, it's encouraging to see this and hear these stories. And, you know, one woman told me she was selling pupusas on the street side. She's able to save $5 a month for her daughter in Bitcoin. And I went like, ooh, five dollars, that's not a lot. But considering that she is, yeah. considering that she lives on like four hundred bucks a month, that's a lot right. of money. So you know 100%. these mm. opportunities are possible thanks to Bitcoin, but as well in El Salvador, you know, it is a dollar first country. So if you mm. actually mm. sometimes they went like, You don't have any cash with you, and I was like, I do, but I really wanna pay with Bitcoin and I explained why. I also handed out rabbit hole stickers and you know show them about the podcast and things, but you still have that urgency that if they really need it quickly, they want the dollar first, but it, yeah, it just takes time to, to get these adoptions going. And from what I've seen, I would have called it a success. You have these circular economies in, in, in El Salvador that work on Bitcoin, but you also have the places that accept it. And from my experience, I've seen less and less Chiva wallets and I've just seen more and more of the regular payment services. So. If Argentina somehow can follow that service, thanks to Malay or not, who gives a shit? Uh, 
I think this could be very much a a sort of a basis for for mm. South America essentially and Central America, you know, to to build out their own ecosystem. It will probably take thirty years, but you know. We all have long time horizons anyway, so like, why should we care that this is happening now or in the next 30 years? That's true, and it makes Bitcoin part of the conversation, right? Because obviously um, it's going to make the news. People are going to start um, thinking about what Bitcoin is in Argentina. They, they might bring out an equivalent government-based wallet, but at the end of the day, Bitcoin doesn't care. It's peer-to-peer. -peer. People will find a way to... Um, trade with each other and, and and do it on their own regardless so tiktok next block um you know i just wish argentinians um a better future and i, yep. I hope that um they despite um some of the questionable things um that he might be trying to pursue that they could use bitcoin as a voice uh, and a consensus moving forward um under under a bitcoin standard if you like but what do you guys think um oh mate what were you gonna say I was just about to say, don't you find it funny that for, what is it now, over a year, the news outlets could have reported about high inflation in Argentina. They chose to ignore that. But now that like a far right political figure is being voted in, mm. suddenly everyone is an Argentina expert. So, you know, kind of yeah. proves our point again as Bitcoiners, yeah. that we need to fix the money for people to understand how effed up the world truly is. 100%. But what do you guys think? Yeah, let us know in the comments and um, give us some feedback about the episode. And yeah, we won't be offended, but we probably will. But anyway, I'll speak to you guys um, soon. And uh, until next time, see you later, guys. Hasta luego.